Okay, today I'm going to show how I made this effect using uh, traces and blob tracking. Um, you'll see the, you got these these lines that are sort of following the motion around, uh, and we also have our squares that uh, sort of motion tracking squares, and then the text. So I'm going to go through all three of those. I'm going to start out with a video. I got this video from Pexels. Uh, seems to be a great little free. Um, free stock video project. So, okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, process this video uh, for the traces. Well, let's just, let's just get started. So uh, I'm gonna first add an edge to this video and then um, I'll show the basic kind of setup of, of a trace. So one of the things we'll see here is we're gonna, we're gonna down, down res this uh, video quite a bit. We're going to go actually down. Let's go all the way down to an eighth. So this video is now only 135 by 240 pixels. And this is because the trace uh, sop is a very heavy, it's a very heavy sop. Even with this, you know, resolution down, it's down to three milliseconds processing on my computer. Um, if I, if I had this even at a quarter, that would bring that up uh, even higher. So I'm going to keep that down at an eighth. Um, the trace is what's converting my 2D video file into 3D, 3D point data. So uh, right now, this is not super useful. There's a bunch of polygons and things in there that I don't really need. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take off point texture and compute normals just to, to make things a little more uh, efficient. Then I'm going to go into a join, and you'll see this is going to convert it into uh, just lines. And there's a lot of things I can play with on here. I can go into the tolerance and, and play with that, the bias amounts. Um, I can wrap first to last to get some extra sort of effects if I want that. I can also skip uh, skip a certain number of, of points. This can kind of give me more jagged, interesting uh, visuals. Um, and we're gonna get into in a little bit of how I'm gonna remove some of this some of this background data so I can focus just on the movement that's happening. Uh, but for now, let's let's start with this so we can see the difference. Um, so from here, I'm going to add it to a null just because I'm about to convert it. And I want to usually um, I'm not doing it everywhere here, but usually you'll want to put a null in between when you're converting from one top or one operator type to another. So let's go ahead and make a little render network for this. I'm going to take this uh, geometry into or take this into a geometry operator. Um, and because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to use the line material. Uh, if you're on a PC, you can use the, the uh, constant and just use a wireframe, but um, it doesn't give, me, it doesn't give you quite the, uh, the flexibility to change line width uh, like this line material does. Uh, okay, so I've got my material attached to my, my material attached to my geometry. Now I'm going to add a camera. And then uh, I'm going to change my camera view to be orthographic. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my render top here. And I want this to match what my what my input's going to be for my video. So this one's 1080 by 1920. So I'm going to go in my resolution, 1080, 1920. And then I'm going to go in here and match my orthographic width to uh, to fill out the entire thing. So this 0 0.56, this is actually, since uh, 1080 by 1920 is uh, 9 by 16, so I can, that's, that 0 0.56 is 9 over 16. So if I put it in there, it'll give me a more precise exact matchup. Okay, um, let's change the color of our line here just so we can see, I'll see it a little better on top of our render. And so this gives us kind of an initial, um, an initial look. So let's, let's add this over the top. Uh, let's composite it and bring in my original video and uh, for the operation, let's say add. Okay, so we've got kind of the basic basic look of this right now going, right? So I've got you know my lines being drawn, but when I look at this, I don't really want all this extra sort of background stuff. I want it to focus on on her, on this, on this dancer, on the movement. So I'm gonna make sort of a cheap uh, movement uh, detector. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put my edge, go go to my original edge here, put it into a cache, and the cache is going to store a certain amount of uh, frames. So right now it's caching 32. That's way more than I need. 
I'm going to go around four just in case I want to tweak this a little bit. But uh, and then I'm going to say the output index of this cache. I want it to actually always show me, uh, let's say, two frames ago. And now that means that this this cache is showing two frames previous to what this current edge is. So to, to see the differences between those, I'm going to use a difference operator. Um, so this is taking those two input images and moving the difference or showing the difference between them in, in value. So um, if I move this back to zero, we'll get a lot of, we'll get nothing because these are the exact same frame. If I go to negative one, you'll see this. Sometimes uh, this is more because my input video is not at the 60 frames that my project is running at right now. Um, you'll get a, like a flicker like this because you're not always hitting a difference in frames. So if I go two frames instead, just to make up that difference, it should be a little bit smoother. Okay, so let's see what that even looks like. Let's let's actually bring up a view of our of our output here, so we can see as we're doing it what it looks like. Um, so if I if I bring in my difference to my drop resolution, you'll see already we're getting a better sort of like uh, just what's changed, right? Um, Let's stretch this stuff out a little bit, give myself a little more room. But I think we can do even better um, because you'll see even even after my my motion detection, because it's a handheld camera, I'm getting some extra stuff in there. So um, you'll notice that I'm getting nice bright lines where there's a lot of movement and these are a little bit fuzzier. So what I could do is I can add a blur to kind of knock some of those little anomaly uh, anomalies down and then I can go in and do a threshold and then adjusting this threshold I can I can really dial in how much of that background pops up inside of, of what I'm doing um, so already you can see I mean I'm getting a pretty good track here with just just lines where where the movement is on the ballerina here uh, the big jumps happen kind of when the when the loop of the video flips back around and there's a big change in the background um, and so you can go in and you can adjust you know the amount of blur to change like how much that background comes in uh, the threshold amounts um, all those will will tweak this a little bit um, lots of things to play with okay so that's our initial our initial effect right um, okay, so second, uh, to get our, our blob tracking effect, I'm actually going to use a very, very similar um, process. In fact, I'm going to use this same initial uh, movement tracking to feed uh, into my blob tracker. The blob tracker also is best used on a lower resolution image, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to select my res op here. So we got the same thing starting here. And I'm going to bring that into a blob track. And you'll see already I'm going to start getting some uh, some tracking markers showing up on her. Uh, the problem here, of course, is that uh, I can't separate this output right now. I can, I can draw the blobs or not, but I can't say, like, only show me the blobs. Um, the way the blob tracker works, though, is that with the blob track operator, you get this nice uh, this nice output table that's showing the location of all your blob tracking boxes. So, because of that, uh, we can use this in a uh, instancing uh, instancing network to to show the boxes, and it'll give us a lot more customization over what those look like as well. So, I'm going to convert this dot into a chop, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. Uh, to uh, convert this correctly, I'm going to say the outputs uh, channel per column. My first row is my names, and my first column is values. My first row is names. My first column is values. So, um, so I've got my my chop data here, and let's see. Let's go ahead put this into a null, and then I'm going to start my instancing network here. Bring this down a little further. Okay, so for my instancing, I'm going to start with a box and bring that into a geometry. Add a uh, another line material and put, give that a little color now, just so once it shows up, I can see it a little better. Oh, sorry, I don't need a box. I want a rectangle. 
Okay, and then um, I'm gonna go into my geometry and in my instancing, I'm gonna turn on our instance tab. I'm gonna turn on instancing and bring in my null as my default instance op. And for the translation on the X and Y, I'm gonna say U and V. <clears throat> um, and I know I'm gonna run into this problem later, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. Because the U and V values are always normalized to zero and one, my values uh, here are gonna be uh, much, you know, th this is gonna zero to one and zero to one. And so I need to make it assume or make it uh, take that ratio into account. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my U value uh, and I'm gonna multiply it by my, uh, my ratio. So I'm gonna add a math in here. Um, and since I'm, this is the only one I'm really doing math on, I'm just gonna say in the scope of the math, I'm gonna say only affect the U. I'm not going to multiply that by that same 9 over 16 ratio. <clears throat> and so this is going to make it so my box renders out um, in, the, uh, in the right width and height. Uh, you'll notice these are huge, so I'm going to bring in also the width and height data. My scale, the x, is width. My scale, the y, is height. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Um, so this should be looking similar to what my box here has. Um, oh, and I'm getting my, my width and heights wrong here. So I'm going to also multiply my, my width times that value as well. So now I get, uh, my nice squares that look like they're showing up in the right places. Okay. Now I'm going to render this out as well. So I'm going to add a camera operator. So in my camera, I'm going to, because my, my tracking dots are showing up our uh, tracking squares are showing up in this top right corner. I'm going to change the view of my camera again to orthographic, but this time I'm going to say the origin is the bottom left. And then I'm going to bring my, uh, my width to that same 6 over 19. Or sorry, 9 over 16. And then render. Use that same... 1080 by 1920. All right, and this render, I don't, I don't want this to be for camera two, and I only want it to be for geo two. I'm gonna have to go back to my, my initial there. And uh, this is only cam one, this is only geo one. Now we've got a separation between these two render, render networks here. Okay, so, uh, I've got my my tracking data here, so let's see what this looks like when I composite um, composite these all together. Bring in my, my lines. Okay. So I've got my squares and my lines, all using this same sort of uh, motion motion detector, my cheap motion detector that I've made. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm gonna change the color of this a little bit just to be something, actually let's make the boxes white for now. Uh, okay, now to add uh, my text. So it gives sort of that extra data visualization look to it when I add text. And I'm gonna do this by using my same blob data here because this is not only giving me the location but it also gives me some interesting numbers that I could use. So. Um, Let's see, um, I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna use a select here first. So I'm gonna select from my, my dot, to, dot to chop, I'm gonna select my U and my V, and I'm gonna convert that to a dot. So now I've got my, my U and V data here. Um, oh, and I just remembered too, because of how this is gonna work, I need to convert this from from UV space into XY space. So I'm gonna add a math first. And just so we're in good habits here, I'm gonna, instead of use a null, that converts this from chop to dat. I'm gonna add a math in here. And um, so I want to, oh, let's see. Yeah, because I want, let me think through this because I want to use the conversion of shrinking my U before I convert it to XY space, I'm gonna go after this initial math where I had multiplied it by the ratio. So 
this is already u and v converted to uh, uh, relative ratio to the to the um, resolution. Uh, I'm going to multiply this now to keep to take it from the zero to one space up to 1920 by 1080 or 1080 by 1920 space. I'm going to multiply it by 1920. So now you'll see my values here are much larger. Um, and maybe to, maybe to kind of give you an idea of where this is going. So uh, what I can do is in the text top, they have uh, this parameter here called specification dat. And what that is, what that's expecting is a table with an X column, a Y column, and a text column. And that will allow me to put just inside of one operator, I can map out a whole bunch of different text based on this input of the table. So uh, I'm going to do exactly that. So right now I have an X and a Y, but then I don't have, I don't have my text right now. So um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to out of my out of my chop two. I'm going to convert this. I'm going to convert it to text and then back to a table, um, so that I can put it kind of in the same column. So I'm going to convert it to text with a comma in between to make it look uh, look like it's a coordinate, and then I'm going to convert this back to a table, and I've got it all in one column here. Okay. So then um, <clears throat> I'm going to make uh, I'm going to merge these two together. Uh, I'm going to merge these two together by appending columns. So now I've got my three columns, my X, my Y, and my text column. Uh, and I need to actually add those headers in. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little table here and add my columns and say X, Y, table. Or, sorry, not table, text. And then I'm going to merge these together. Okay, so I have my X, Y, and my text. Throw that in a null. Okay, and then this is what I'm going to bring into my, my text operator. And before I start doing everything, I'm going to go ahead and change my font. I'm going to go with, uh, uh, man, this is so annoying on Mac. I got a bug here, I gotta send over. Okay, maybe I won't change the file right now. Okay, so I'm going to um, bring in my specification dat in this table, and I'm gonna change my size to be the correct size, 1080 by 1920. Now I'm getting my, my text showing up. Uh, I'm gonna drop my font size down a little bit, make it a little more, a little more pleasing, and then Let's uh, throw this text uh, into my my final comp, and there we go. So we've got uh, our tracing, we've got our blob detection, and we've got our fun little text coordinates showing up on top. Uh, hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, send them my way, or if you have any uh, suggestions on the next effect I should try and try and recreate, let me know.